Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Now this is my third attempt in trying to film this video because Miss Pepper over here was not happy that I was near her coop and not letting her out so she was making noise at top volume and it was very loud. So I let them out so they're roaming now so they should quiet down. Um, but I wanted to talk in this video about using diatomaceous earth in your chicken coop slash on or around your chickens. Now this is a very controversial topic in the chicken community. I feel like this topic and using or not using supplemental heat in the winter in your chicken coop are probably like two of the most argued about topics in the chicken community. However, I'm not telling you how to chicken your chickens, okay? Um, you be a chicken tender as you see fit. Um, this is just what I'm doing with my chickens. And as you guys know, I tend to do things more on the natural side and that also applies to my chickens as well. So let's start off by talking about what is diatomaceous earth and it is a safe and natural substance made from microscopic aquatic algae called diatoms. The skeleton of those diatoms are made from silica which is then ground into a really really fine powder. It's important to get a diatomaceous earth that is low in the crystalline component of silica and high in the um, amphorous. Amphorous? Amphorous. I'll put the word on the screen. Um, high in the amphorous content. Um, expo long exposure to diatomaceous earth that does have high contents of the crystalline silica in it can cause forms of lung cancer, which is why it's such a huge controversy in the animal community. Um, however, if you find one that has less than 2% of crystalline silica, this brand uh, has 1% and it's not written on the actual packaging of the diatomaceous earth. You have to reach out to the manufacturer um, and then they'll give you that information. So how diatomaceous earth works is that it causes the insects to dry out and die by absorbing the fats and oils from the cuticle of the insect's exoskeleton, specifically red mice, fleas, and lice. And those are three of the common insects that you have to worry about when you have chickens. Um, so what to look for when you're getting a diatomaceous earth, as I stated, you want to make sure that one, it's food grade, two, contains less than 2% of the crystalline silica, three, there's no fillers such as chalk or sand because some DEs do come with chalk or sand as fillers. You just want pure food grade diatomaceous earth. And then you want one that's mined as locally as possible to you. Sometimes that can be hard, but if you can't get one that's locally mined, that would be even better. And then one in high amorphous content. So some benefits of diatomaceous earth is that one, they can, it can help control parasites externally. Now there aren't as many studies that show there are benefits internally. However, externally it does have, there are studies that prove that it helps control those specific, those specific parasites. Number two is that there are studies that have shown that chickens that are free range that get diatomaceous earth added to their chicken feed get heavier and lay bigger eggs with a bigger yolk. That's kind of a personal thing. I don't put chicken, I don't put diatomaceous earth in their chicken feed. I just put it in their coop. So where you can add your diatomaceous earth. Like I said, you can add it in their chicken feed if that's something you are comfortable with. Um, you can add it to their dust baths if you have a specific container that your chickens dust bathe in. Uh, and then you also can apply directly to the chicken. So that's where this little guy comes in handy. So it just, you press it and it comes out very, very finely. And you would have to make sure that all the mites that are currently there are removed. And then you would just kind of hold her with her head facing away from you. Um, and then kind of cover her head with a towel, not like cover it, more like block it. And then just use the duster to spray directly on their vents. Cause that's usually where the lice and mites try or the lice and mites accumulate. And then also make sure you're adding some more to the coop to, in order to aid in getting rid of whatever mites you have left over. Now, when you do apply it to your chicken, if you have a bigger coop than I do, that's like a walk-in one, make sure you are not in the coop. You need to be out 
in an open area. Two, you wanna make sure that you are wearing a mask if inhaling the dust is something that you are concerned with. And three, you wanna make sure you do it on a less windy day. So those are the three things you wanna make sure. You wanna wear a mask if you're not comfortable with inhaling the dust from the diatomaceous earth. Do it on a less windy day and then make sure you're out, you're in an open area when you're putting it on your chickens. Now in the coop, the area that I do it is that I do it on the bottom in their chicken run because they do tend to dust bathe down there. So I put it at the bottom of the chicken run. I also specifically put it under their roosts inside of their coop as well. You can put it in their nesting boxes if that's an area that you are concerned about as well or you have a current infestation and you want to get it under control then you can add it to their nesting boxes however I usually just add it to under their roosting area and then in the bottom of their chicken run as well so yeah so I kind of just clean out their old hay first and then kind of let it air out for a little bit because diatomaceous earth is only effective when it's dry so if you have any kind of moisture in the coop it's not going to be effective so I let the coop air out for a little bit and then I add the diatomaceous earth on the bottom and then the hay on top or you could do it vice versa I don't really worry about mixing it in because as we know chickens like to scratch so they'll naturally kind of mix it in themselves um, so that's just kind of how I apply it to the coop area in conclusion, that's how I use diatomaceous earth around my chickens and in my coop. Again, this is a personal decision that you have to make for your own chickens. Do whatever you think is best for them. This is just what I think is best for my chickens. And remember that it can be a little bit of a heated discussion. So just try to approach it calmly and do as much personal research as you would like um, before you make a decision to use something like diatomaceous earth in your coop. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.